So let's look at question two on the same paper, December 2021. It's about a company called Bingo Packaging PLC is engaged in the manufacture distribution of corrugated car cartons in Sri Lanka. Company is evaluating two mutually exclusive projects. As you know, the mutually exclusive project means when you accept one, you cannot accept another other project. Right, project X and Y, one project only will be selected. Each project is expected to last five years. So it's about five year period project. And then they will uh, create or uh, generate additional cash flows. Cost of the project is 120 million. Cost of the project is 120 million. Residual value of the project X and Y, 15 and 12 percentage of the each of the project. So that's basically the residual. Details of the net cash flows are given. Here 1 to 5, X and Y, you can see that 34 million, 36 million, 37, 38, 38. So basically it's slowly increasing. Whereas project Y, you would observe that cash flows are slowly reducing. So, so first project has increasing trend in the cash flows. Second project has decreasing trend in the cash flows. Almost the same overall total cash flow. So if you look at uh, cash flows per se, almost the same cash flows total. But as you know, financial management, we have time value of money consideration for the period of the cash flows. To finance the selected project as company has decided to use the, not to use the funds currently available in the company, but to uh, as it to be used as to manage the existing business. So they don't want to use the existing funds in the company to invest in the project. According to the dividend policy of the company, please read it properly, according to the dividend policy of the company, dividend payout ratio is maintained at 50 percent over the last eight years. So company has been maintaining the dividend payout ratio at 50 percent, that means out of the profits made by the company, 50 percent age has been paid as dividend. So uh, profit after tax, say 100 million, 50 percent they pay as dividend. So 50 million is paid as dividend, that is 50 percent. That is the last eight year company is practicing. Company has not declared the dividend for the last year, 2021 has not declared dividends, which net profit is 375 million. And this profit is the highest profit the company has earned from the it started. So you should know that 375 million profit earned by the company for last year is the highest profit they have made. Company has a possibility to reduce this payout ratio in order to finance the project. So please note, in order to invest in the new project, company is trying to see whether we can reduce the, reduce the dividend payout, reduce the dividend payout so that we will have more profits available to invest in the project. So accordingly, Company is planning to maintain at least a minimum dividend payout of 32 percent. Minimum payout of 32 percent. So 50 percent has been the dividend payout in the last eight years, but now they are considering whether to reduce the dividend payout to 32 percent, which is the minimum dividend payout they need to maintain as part of the dividend policy and the management decision. So please be aware, the company is planning to pay uh, dividends reduced level compared to past. So this is something, an impactful exercise for the shareholders. We'll come to that discussion. If in case, if in case the amount that would be retained through the reduction of the dividend payout ratio is not sufficient for the investment of 120 million, the investment capital expenditure you are planning, if you don't think that your money, what you are retaining from the reduction of the dividend payout is not sufficient, what are you going to do? You have to find further money. The company is going to use the debt financing as an option at an interest rate of 9 percent. So they will be using debt financing as an option to fund the project which is a shortfall of the dividend payout reduction. So there is definitely a re amount requirement for you to fund the project so which you are going to use the debt financing. However, BPP prefers to maintain a current debt equity ratio. Now this is another story. The company is going to have current debt equity ratio to finance the cost of the project that is selected. In addition, one of the major shareholder, now this is a concern of the shareholder that your reduction in dividend payout is not a very good message for the shareholders. So one of the major shareholders has said, he, they have a, it's a major concern regarding the reduction in dividend payout. So please be aware, when the company has been maintaining a dividend payout and the shareholders have been getting that dividend throughout and they are happy with the dividend payout. And suddenly your company is going to reduce the dividend payout. 
So that will have a negative impact to the shareholders' mind because shareholders will not be happy that they are dividends to go down or reduce. It's like you and me are getting salary in the company and suddenly the company says that year after we will reduce your salaries. This is what happened in COVID period. COVID when it started 2020 March, some of the companies immediately announced to the public or maybe the company shareholders or employees that they are not able to pay the salary what they used to pay. So they will reduce say 10%, 25% like that, they, even the big companies have mentioned. So that is because they realize that problems that they are going to face over the period, so to be on a safe side, they reduce the salaries. But no employee would be happy to listen, say that my sh the, uh, salary amount that's going to pay every month will go to reduce. Even though you might say it's a short term, but then it's not a good news for any, sh any employees. Same thing, shareholders who has been paid, getting dividend throughout the period, at a different at a different uh, day on day, day per dividend payout ratio, suddenly he sees that it's going to come down. So he's not going to be happy. Not only one major shareholder, I'm sure most of the shareholder will not be happy about it. So you could see that the extract of the the balance sheet, they are given non-current assets, networking capital, total assets minus current liability. That is funded by equity capital, stated capital and retained earning 4.6 and 800 that is 5.4 million. Total equity 5.4, so 10 percent irredeemable debenture, irredeemable, there is no redemption date, 1.8 million, total 7.3. So please understand, this is the simple balance sheet where they say what is the total net assets you have and how it has been funded. So you have equity funding and debt funding. By looking at it without calculating any number, you know that you have more equity contribution to the company than the debt financing. So this is the present status and we are looking at two projects. Roman number one, the question, analyze, analyze how BPP could finance the initial cost of the project that is selected. Analyze how BPP could finance the initial cost of the project that is selected. Support your analysis with appropriate calculation and justification. So you are supposed to analyze the, the question how that financing could be done, how the financing could be done. So we have gone through the case, it's about two projects, 120 million each and five year project, only one can be selected and the five year cash flows are given. So you have to now decide how to finance this. The financing options available, reduction of your dividend payout so that you use your retained earning to fund your investment. Second, you use debt financing. Third any shortfall you have to find the way of financing. So these are the things you need to discuss in your answer. Okay. So when you go to the suggested question, suggested answer, and 20 million is a requirement of the funds for the project. The total funds available or funds needed for the project is 120 million, 120 million. And the profit of the company 375 million for the last year. 375 million for the last year. So if you say you have been paying dividend payout of 50% and you want to reduce it to 32% which is in compliance with your investment policy or the dividend policy. So you are saying that 18% I am going to reduce the dividend payout from 50% to 32%. So 18% I am going to reduce. So 18% reduction is how much? 375 million, 18% reduction will give you 67.5 million additional money for you to invest in your project. So by reducing your dividend payout, that is 18% reduction, you are going to save or have for your project 67.5 million. So this is the money you are going to get, but your capital expenditure requirement is 120 million. How much you have got it from the reduction of dividend payout? 67.5 million. Then we go down. Out of 120 million, I have taken from the retained earning by reduction of dividend payout 67.5 million. Then how much I have got balanced? 52.5 million I need. I need 52.5 million. From where do you get? From where do I get my 52.5 million? I need to find it through the debt financing. Debt financing. So if the simple uh, financing decision making, you got from the equity funding or retained earning 67.5 million. Debt financing 52.5 million, simple answer. But they give you another condition that company wants to maintain the current equity debt ratio or debt equity ratio. 
they don't want to take any amount as a debt financing. They want to maintain a current debt equity ratio. So what is your current debt equity ratio? Let's just look at it. Existing debt to equity ratio, as we looked at earlier on the balance sheet, our equity, state capital and retained earning together 5.4 million and the debt capital that is redeemable debentures at 10 percent is 1.8 million. So this is your present debt equity ratio, debt equity ratio. How much? 25 percent debt capital, 75 percent equity, equity capital. This is your present capital structure, present debt equity ratio, 25 percent and 75 percent. If you are going to maintain that, if you are going to maintain that, 120 million capital expenditure needed for the new project. 25% only you can finance from debt capital. If you are going to maintain your debt equity ratio, you are going to borrow 25% out of 120 million requirement, which is how much? 30 million. So if I say, in order to comply with my current debt equity ratio, I will be borrowing only 30 million, not what I talked earlier, 52.5 million. Only 30 million I will borrow. Otherwise, I will not be able to maintain my current debt equity ratio. In order to comply with the current debt equity ratio, what I can do, maximum borrowing, 25 percentage of 120 million requirement, which is 30 million. So when I do that, capital expenditure needed 120 million, 30 million I am taking from debt capital, retained earning I am going to use 67.5 million, which is my reduction of dividend payout ratio, reduction of dividend payout ratio, 67.5 million. Still I have short of 22.5 million, still my short is 22.5 million. This is what I can do if I have to comply with my dividend payout of the investment or the dividend policy that is 32 percent I have to maintain. I want to maintain my present debt equity ratio of 25-75. If I want to maintain that also, what I can do out of 120 million, I take retained earning 67.5 million, what we looked at earlier. And I will use the debt capital 30 million, then a balance I have to find through other short for other ways of financing. So this is basically the possible way of doing it. Then the suggest answer talks about further discussion, right? So what I want to tell you, if you talk about a project, 120 million, 120 million is needed. As they mentioned, they will use the retained earning from the reduction of re dividend payout, which gives you 67.5. And I want to maintain my current debt equity ratio, which is 30 percentage, sorry, 25 percent, which is 30 million rupees. So when I take that also for my project, I am still short of 22.5. So I'm, how I am going to do it? So the best way 22.5 million you have is to issue shares on the right issue and raise the money. So this is option available. Just theoretically, I can tell these are options. But let's look at what is your current debt to equity ratio, 25-75, 25-75. Is it the significant gearing for the company? Is it a significant gearing? To be honest, no, it's not significant, right? 25-75 is not a significant amount. So we need to understand that since it's not significant gearing, company still have the opportunity of increasing its gearing company still have the opportunity of increase in the gearing because generally if you are a profitable company, please be aware of this, when you are a profitable company and you have a lower gearing, always it's better that you borrow money and invest in your project because definitely your return on your investment will be more than your cost of debt. Return on your investment will be more than cost of debt. So the project the company needs to be profitable and you need to have a track record of profit making company. In that case, your return is definitely more than cost of debt. So it's always preferable to borrow money and invest. Only the uh, limitation you will have is that gearing. Am I having excess gearing or I am having gearing of which is controllable? So your 25 percentage level of debt is not that variable. Right? When you are talking about a profit making company, you do not have to concern about it. But those details you can look at it, but have an idea that this is the overall evaluation we are going to look at. So number form, this we calculated, this is what can be done. Just look at it, I think one thing I want to, there are discussions on the suggested answer, you may go through that. But what I want to tell you or show you. If I go to, if I go to 
fund my 120 million. Please note this. If I go to fund my entire 120 million project from debt financing, debt financing, entire 120 million I am going to finance through debt capital. So what's going to happen? I have 5.4 billion equity at the moment. From that, I have to pay 50% dividend payout, but I used to pay shareholders. I pay 50% dividend of the 375 million, which was the profit last year I made, which is the highest profit I have made. So I pay 50 percentage of the profit I made that will take out from my retained earning. So my retained earning will come down to 5.2 million, which is 73% of your equity, total capital structure. And your debt capital at the moment 1.8 million. You want 120 million for your project, which gives you your debt capital to 1.945, which is 27% of your capital. So now see, your time 25% debt capital become 27%, only 2% more if you are going to borrow entire money from debt capital. Only one condition you have to look at is return of your investment should be more than, return of your investment should be more than your cost of debt. If your cost of debt is cheaper than your return on investment, no problem you to increase your gearing because your company is low geared company, low geared company. There is no harm to the shareholder. Actually, the shareholders will be very much happy because you are creating wealth for the shareholders. So on that basis, if you use 120 million from debt financing, your gearing will increase, but it's not a uh, worrying number because it's going to be 27% from 25%, which is a small increase. So the company have a choice to finance your project 100% from debt capital. The other thing you need to remember, when I go to reduce my dividend payout from 50% to 32%, as a shareholder, as I mentioned earlier, as an employee, we don't like the employee's salary to reduce. Same thing the shareholder. Shareholders have been getting dividend payout of 50%. When you suddenly say, no, I will reduce it to 32%, people are not very much happy. And when the company has made good profits, good profits, you are not going to get convinced that your company is not going to pay same dividend payout. Maybe if you are very much... Uh, clear and you can convince the shareholder by wealth creation because of your retention, then shareholder may agree on it. But generally the shareholder perception going to be my dividend that I used to get is coming down because the company is reducing my dividend payout. Okay, So though, therefore please consider that in your decision making. But in terms of the capital structure or gearing level, ideal situation for the company is finance the entire 920 million from debt capital. So you don't have to worry about because you are going to maintain your dividend payout ratio, no impact to shareholder, they are happy about it. And you are going to benefit the shareholders because you are going to borrow money at a lower cost than your cost of equity. Definitely your cost of debt is going to be lower than your cost of equity. So your shareholder will further benefit because of your gearing, because of your additional gearing. Okay, keep that in mind. So this question, basically talks about the analysis that we have discussed. Then moving to Roman number two, evaluate which should be, which project should be financially acceptable by the company where the cost of capital 15% by explaining the primary objective shareholder, five marks. Now see this question are uh, just bonus, right? You have been given a five year project, very simple cash flows and they want you to evaluate at 15%. Since it's a mutually exclusive project, only one project you can select. So you have to evaluate both, project, both projects at the cost of capital of 15%. So these are the cash flows, straightforward. 120 million investment, 15% residual. So 120 million into 15% is 18 million. You get it. These are your net cash flow, which is given in the question. And cost of capital is 15%. Even though cost of debt is 9%. Cost of capital is given as 15%. That's what you have to use for evaluation. So your WAC is going to be 15%. Assuming that WAC is 15%, NPV is 11.8 million. This is the first project. Then when you go to Y project, your 120 million investment, 12 percentage your recovery or residual, 14.4 million. Net cash flow as per the table that is given. Cost of capital 15%, you discount. Only five year project, it's not infinite period project, five year project, NPV is 12.1 million. So you need to understand that there are two projects we are talking about, 11.8 million, 12.1 million. Same amount of investment, same period of investment, same cost of capital we have used, 
which one is creating more wealth to the shareholder? Which one is creating more wealth to the shareholders? Definitely project Y, which is giving you more in PV than project X. So obviously, we have to understand project Y is acceptable because it creates more wealth than this. So primary objective of any corporate, primary objective of any corporate to maximize shareholder wealth. So you have to select the project which gives you more wealth creation. So Y project is selected. Now look at it. Again, going back to the question one. Question one, we decided or we have been uh, kind of influencing for the company to borrow money and invest. Even though you are going to increase your gearing, which is a very insignificant growth in the gray gearing, you are recommending to borrow money and invest. And the question says, uh, borrowing, you are borrowing going to be, you can borrow money at the rate of 9%. So you can borrow money at the rate of 9%. And as I mentioned in your project, your project is viable, project is viable even at 15%. So your project is viable at 15%. That means NPV is positive at 15%. NPV positive 15 means your return or the IRR of the project is how much? NPV positive at 15%. That means IRR should be more than 15%. So IRR of the project, both projects is more than 15 so your return of the project is more than 50. That's why I earlier mentioned, if your return is more than cost of debt, it's always recommended to borrow money and invest. If the return is more than cost of debt, borrow money and invest, why the gap between the return and the cost of debt will be for the shareholders, will be available for shareholders. So you borrow at 9% and you invest in your project, which is going to give you more than 15%. So the gap between those two goes to the shareholder. So shareholder will be benefited by the borrowing, by the gearing. Only thing, the gearing cannot go beyond a level that could be a dangerous to the company. In this case, the gearing is 25%, which is low geared company. So low geared company, go are borrowing further, 120 million, doesn't any way harmful. And the project is also feasible, it's profitable project. So you have to understand that definitely it's more wealth creating exercise for the company. Okay, so that's basically the suggested answer for the Roman number two, Roman number two, and the B part, B part, if you read, Sri Lanka rupee faced relatively high volatility during the period of August to September 2021, where the dollar and dollar to rupee exchange rate fluctuated from 200 to 230 levels. I'm sure like this. The exchange rate management question has been asked in December also. Actually, at that time, the, the exchange rate uh, risk is starting to emerge at a significant level, but it was not that significant. But if you take this now, it's so serious, so serious. So I'm sure like the examiner in your paper, in your paper, the chances will be 2022, June, July, the paper, the chances would be the more question or more uh, testing will be done in terms of the exchange rate risk management because we are, uh, as a country, we know that this is going to be a uh, major risk for most of the companies as a country to face. So that is basically the reason the question also will be giving most focus, most scope for the exchange rate risk management in your paper 2022 also. So this paper, it was a start at that time. The exchange rate is becoming more important. But now if you look at it, it's the important, the important, because any company which is in import business is going through in difficulties because of exchange rate risk. But the people who are in export business comparatively better off because they are getting excess gains because of the export proceeds which are coming in rupees or dollars and converted rupees. So you get good benefit of the exports. True that export company also have uh, impact because of the imported material because they also there are many exporters use imported materials imported goods so that again goes up in terms of cost so there is impact for them but still still the export companies are more beneficial with the exchange rate depreciation but import company if you are a purely a import and selling company you are in difficulty because your cost has gone up tremendously with the dollar the rupee depreciation and the import restriction, I'm sure like many companies are going through this risk seriously. So your paper, the chance of this area being tested significantly is there. 
So, I am sure like your theoretical knowledge has to be very strong and you need to be up to date with the current environment very much. I appreciate if you can read regularly your business newspapers and watch the TV or radio or listen to radio and understand what's happening in the exchange rate markets, right? How we, our country is trying to solve it, what are the techniques they have been using and whether that is working properly. All this please be aware. So, I may not be able to do this in a class here, but then you need to read that and you need to understand how the exchange rate risk has evolved over the last few months in a significant manner which has brought the country into bankruptcy, which has come to the come to the bankruptcy level. So, you should know these things. I think there are enough articles, enough uh, reading materials available in today's context. It is only thing you need to sit in front of the internet, just look at the articles and if you are reading regularly business newspapers, you are anyway very much knowledgeable. But please do that because this is something you have to be aware. You being the finance professional going to be in this environment, right? You need to be very much knowledgeable on this, okay? So, moving on to this question, this is actually at the start of the exchange rate risk issue. So, they are talking about a company which is importing goods and selling and they are exporting also after manufacturing. You are a CEO for a large conglomerate that has annual revenue of 30 billion rupees, rupees term 30 billion. Exports contribute 60 percent group revenue, 60 percent of group revenue comes from exports. Remainder comes from sale of imported product, imported products. Gross profit margin 35 percent and 50 percent from the export you get 35 percent margin and the imported goods you import and sell the goods in Sri Lanka 15 percent GV margin. Government directives, imports are mandated on a LC on a, date, on a 80 days basis. So, if you are importing goods, you have to open LC for 180 days. That means, you are paying your supplier after 180 days time. But export proceeds are generally received in 120 days. So, you have to understand that this company has two sides of it. One is exports, one is imports. Exports, you get your money in 120 days. Imports, you are getting money or you have to pay your money on a 80 days time. Now, you need to understand from a risk point of view. If you say your import payment has to go after 180 days that 180 days. So, you buy today the goods at 100,000 dollars at 200 rupees, for example. You buy the goods If you say today you bought 100,000 dollars worth goods and today your exchange rate say dollar is rupees 200, 200 rupees for example. But you have to pay in 6 months time, 6 months time only you have to pay your supplier because under the LC you have to pay in 6 months time. 6 months time. 1 dollar is becoming 250 rupees, 250 rupees. So, you need to understand that two hundred fifty, right? It may look like 280, 250, right? So, you see that the 50 rupees, 50 rupees you have to pay more to pay supplier in 6 months time you have to pay 50 rupees more. So, as an importing company even though you bought 100,000 dollars worth goods, today the exchange rate is 200, but 6 months time 250. So, you have to pay 25 percent more in terms of rupees to pay for your 100,000 bill. So, please remember when Sri Lanka rupee depreciating daily basis. When the Sri Lanka rupee was depreciating daily basis, longer the period your supplier payment, that means you are in trouble. La longer the payment, if your supplier is going to be paid, you are in trouble because you are paying more rupees than today, tomorrow. So, that is the disadvantage of delay payment or later payments for your imports. But if it is the export side of it, you are benefiting. Why? Today, the 200 rupees you will get for your export. But 6 months time or even 4 months time if you are going to get your money, you are going to get more rupee value than today's rupee value. 
So that is the difference in uh, export side of it and import side of it. So I am sure like everyone is aware of that. So coming back to this question, coming back to this question, describe, describe how you would plan the treasury management activities during August September period based on the company's operation, based on the company's operation. So now what they are asking is a theoretically they are asking you how your treasury will be managing a situation like this because you are having export, you are having imports and you know that your imports bills will be settled in six months time, export bills will be received in four months time and your Sri Lanka rupee is depreciating, Sri Lanka rupee is depreciating. How do you go to analyze, how do you go to manage your treasury? Your 30 billion is your group revenue, 30 billion is group revenue, export 60 percent which is 18 billion and sale of imported products 12 billion. So this is your uh, composite of your revenue, export business is generating 18 billion, import and sell local market 12 billion. So this is your total revenue. If you consider the exchange rate at 200 rupees, you are talking about your exports one year business, it is not about August, September we are talking the entire annual turnover 18 billion at 200 rupees it is going to be 90 million dollars. 12 billion rupees if you are importing at 85 percent because there is a margin of 15 percent so at 85 percent that is your import bill going to be it is not 100 percent you have, have to understand that your 12 billion is your selling price because your revenue is 30 billion we take 60 percent revenue export 40 percentage as the imported goods. So 12 billion is sales value. Since the sales value is not a cost of sales, you have to convert the sales into cost of sales which is 85 percent because your margin is 15 percent. So 85 percentage of 12 billion is your cost of sales which at the 200 rupee per dollar you are talking about 51 million dollars you have to pay out, pay out. You are receiving 90 million dollars to the country, 51 million you are going to pay at the 200 rupee rate. Same thing if it is 230 rupees rate. 78 million is your export proceeds, 44 million is your import bills. So this is what the scenario of this company for the annual period, not for the August, September annual period. What I would like to say, if you look at your imports are lower than your exports, imports are lower than exports. So when you say your imports are lower than export, the advantage in terms of risk management you will get your export proceeds and keep it in the bank account. You keep your export proceeds in bank account, dollar account and you use the dollar account to remit or pay your supplier for your import bills. So since your import bills are dollar terms lower than your export proceeds in dollar terms you are able to settle your supplier without any problem. In other side you are not going to have a significant gain or loss in terms of your import payment because you are going to pay from your export proceeds. You are not using or you are not using your rupees to convert to pay dollars. You are using your dollars to pay your dollars. So therefore you do not have an exchange rate impact for that value of your imports. Please be aware of that. Second, the advantage your company at the moment is you have to pay your supplier six months time whereas your export proceeds come in four months time. So you are getting money or the proceeds earlier than your import bill. If you are to pay your import bill earlier than export proceeds, you might have problem unless you have cushion of your dollars. If you do not have excess dollars, you are maintained over a period of time. If you do not have it, you cannot pay your supplier, you have to buy at the market trade, that means you have to incur exchange loss. But in this case, your export proceeds come faster than import payment, so you have a dollar receipts which you keep it in your bank account and use it for your supplier payment. So that is the advantage. Only thing when you are saying it is you are getting your dollar in export proceed 4 months time and you have to pay your supplier in 6 months time, 2 month period you have your dollars with you. So the 58 million or 44 million or 51 million or 44 million whatever the exchange rate, the dollar what you have got, the dollars you will be having with you for 2 months time period for the supplier payment. So until that period what you can do, you can deposit your money in dollar terms for the two months till that supply payment comes to due. 
okay. So, that is the uh, way the treasury would be managing this uh, situation so that you do not have to worry about. Actually, this company is in a better wicket because you get export proceeds more than your import bills. So, you are able to manage your exchange risk without much of a problem and you will definitely benefit because when the Sri Lanka rupee is depreciating and you are a net import, net export company, you are going to benefit from the exchange rate depreciation. Then the C part. C part, if you read, they are talking about a company in US, company in US, it is a fund, it is a fund, they are allocating 50 million dollars to invest in frontier markets, out of that money, they are willing to invest 5 percentage in Sri Lanka, in, in Sri Lanka share market. So, they are given in the uh, 5 percentage of the allocation will be invested in Sri Lanka share market and it has happened 2 years back. At the time of investment 2 years back, the dollar rate was 180. So, it has been constant over the last 2 years. So, the last 2 years they are talking at that time, 2 years it is two, uh, same exchange rate at 180. So, the US company or the fund has invested 5 percentage of 50 million dollars in Sri Lankan share market. And at the rate when they converted in Sri Lanka rupee at that time, it was 180 per dollar. That money after they invest, the company or the fund received dividend from Sri Lankan companies amounting to 112.5 million or 112,500 dollars during the last two, two years as dividend. So, if you look at whenever they give this kind of story, remember that you should put yourself in that fund. You should put that uh, feeling to you saying that you are in the fund company, you are the CFO of the fund. So, you invested in Sri Lanka 5 percentage of 50 million dollars, you converted in Sri Lanka rupee and invest in share market of Sri Lanka. At that time you converted 180 and last 2 years you got dividend of 112,500 dollars, you have got that over the 2 year period dollar term you have got dividend as a CFO of that fund. As of 31st August 2021, the carrying value of the fund or the investment rupee value, Sri Lanka stock market, 650 million. So, your fund has uh, have a value of 650 million. Due to the volatility of the US dollar and rupee exchange rate, due to the volatility of the US dollar and rupee exchange rate in August 2021, the company decided to exit from Sri Lanka. This is what happened. Actually, there are many investors went out of the market because they realized that they will be losing if they hold on to the Sri Lankan investments. So, there was net selling always in the share market for a longer period. I think over only this year, uh, latter part, slight increase was there. But if you take the last 2021, it was a net foreign selling. So, that means foreigners have been selling in our share market and getting out of the market. So, that is when you see that you, uh, rupee is depreciating, as a foreign investor, he will lose because the money what he invested at that time, when the exchange rate depreciate further, they will lose in terms of capital, not the dividend or return, the capital will be losing. So, this company also have realized in August and they decided to exit from the market, exit from the market. Since the company wants to sell their investment in a sudden move, you may not be able to get the exact value of your fund, which is 650 million on 31st August, you won't get that money. So, they are willing to forego some of the money and then sell the investment and recover the investment to US. So, they have decided to sell and the investment will give them 630 million only, not 650 million, 630 million. That means 20 million they are willing to sell, will uh, lose. The fund needs to pay brokerage and other fees amounting to 1.12 of the sales price. This is normal share market transaction. You need to understand that you have to pay the brokerage and other fees, which is 1.1 percent, 1 2 percentage of the sales proceeds. Sorry. The company extract or contracted to Sri Lankan bank to convert its net proceeds from Sri Lanka rupee to dollars. The bank treasury quoted dollar rupee uh, rate range 205 to 210. So, you should know that. When there is a spread given 205 to 210, there is a buying rate, there is a selling rate. Okay, please remember that. Determine 
the dollar determine the to dollar total rate of return of the company investment portfolio in Sri Lanka. So they are asking you what is the return the foreign fund got from the investment in Sri Lanka over the two year period. Actually two year period they had kept the investment. So what is the total return in terms of dollar? In terms of return, in terms of dollars, how much is fund got from the investment portfolio? So I think these are bonus marks to be honest. Bonus marks the examiner is giving you, right? Very basic kind of questions. Uh, if you are knowledgeable with your basic calculation, you should be able to get the marks without much of a problem. So please note that each question answer is given the study text reference and the learning outcome. So this is one of the things the examiner used to say right students are not very much aware of the learning outcome learning outcome so you should be knowing what is the knowledge or what is the learning you are getting from that chapter right so that is when you could apply you realize that this is what i have learned so these are the questions which are given to see whether you understand the learning what you have got so if you take here 50 million dollars the us fund 50 million dollars they have allocated for frontier market, Sri Lanka especially they are allocating 5 percentage of 50 million dollars. So from a US company point, 5 percent of 50 million dollars is 2.5 million dollars. So 2.5 million dollars you are allocated, you are allocated to invest in Sri Lanka. So two years back the investment had been decided and they invest in Sri Lanka 2.5 million dollars. So when they decided to sell or buy shares in stock market of Sri Lanka, they buy at 180 is the exchange rate. So 2.5 million dollars when they convert to Sri Lanka, they get 450 million rupees. So Sri Lanka, they invest 450 million rupees. That is a story starting. Two years back, 450 million rupees invested in Sri Lanka stock market. But dollar point of view, 2.5 million. So US company CFO, you should know 2.5 million are invested in dollar term. But Sri Lanka rupee term, it is 450 million. Dividends, how much I got for two years? 112,500. 112,500. I got as dollar return 112,500 in terms of dividend for two years. Sale proceeds, 630 million. Even though we said 650 million portfolio, when you are going to sell on a sudden move, you sell it at 630 million, which has a brokerage of 1.12%. So net sale proceeds, 622.9 million. So net proceeds, what you are going to get, 622.9 million from the proceeds in Sri Lanka. Still we are in Sri Lanka, we sold the shares in the market and we got after a brokerage, rupee point of view, 622.9 million. I believe that you are understanding that basic, basic transactions. Dollar exchange rate in Sri Lanka today, today in the sense the question time, 210 rupees. So you should know buying rate, selling rate, right? Sri Lankan company is uh, or Sri Lankan broker will be buying the dollars to remit to the US. So when you are going to buy, you have to pay higher price to buy the dollar. When you are selling, the bank will give you lower rate. When you are going to buy, bank will charge you higher rate. So 210 is the rate. Accordingly, the US company or the CF for you, you will be getting 2.9 million as a recovery of your investment. That's your capital recovery. With the capital gain, you are recovering 2.9 million. How much you invested? 2.5 million dollars. 2.5 million dollars. Two years back. Today as a US company you are recovering 2.9 million dollars. So the difference between the recovery and the investment 466,400 which is the capital gain. Which is the capital gain? The capital has increased over the two year period and you have got 466 million or 466,400 dollars as a recovery. Apart from that, you got dividend for last two years, which is 112,500. So please remember, return, return, share market, the return has two components, one is capital gain plus Dividend, capital gain dividend. So in this case, the portfolio 
but we are talking from US, they invested in our share market and they invested at that time, two years back, $2.5 million. Today, when they recover, they got more capital, that includes capital gain, and they got dividend also. So they are asking how much return the company gets. So the capital gain plus dividend forms the return component. So your return is going to be both capital gain plus dividend. Both capital gain plus dividend. So on that basis, 2.9 million you got capital recovery, 2.5 million you invested. So that means capital gain is 466,400 in dollar term. You have recover, uh, calculating return in dollar term. Plus dividend you got 112,500, total return 578,900. So please be aware, total re return 578,900 for the investment of 2.5 million dollars, your return is 23%. Only thing, this return is not for one year, it's for two year period. So if you really look at it, it's not 23% for the one year period, it's 23% for two year period. So keep that in mind, if you want you calculate your one year period return by dividing it, right? But simply to understand that 23% for two year period of investment. So a US company had made a right decision, right decision to sell the investment and to recover the money. Because by, at that time, the exchange rate started depreciating or Sri Lanka rupees start depreciating. Further, now today you say the same question. Today you look at the same question. If two years is finishing now, you are going to recover your investment. How much is dollar rate? Not 200, 210. It is 365. 210 has become 365. So when you go to divide your sale proceeds, when you divide your sale proceed, net sale proceeds of 622 million, you divide by 365 today, you will not get 2.9 million dollars, you will get lesser than 2.9 million. Maybe you will get lesser than 2.5 million dollars. That means you will have a capital loss. Here we are talking about capital gain, but if you sell it today, the investor would have lost capital. So capital loss would have been there. So your return will be lower than this. Why your capital loss means sometimes your return is very small because your dividend only. So please be aware. This is why the investors have started selling over the past when the exchange rate started to move in a negative manner. So Sri Lanka rupee depreciation is good for an exporter in Sri Lanka, but it's very bad for an investor outside Sri Lanka. Because he, if he has invested already, if he has invested already, he will see a dollar investment value comes down daily, day by day. So that's the disadvantage. I'm sure like in your paper, the examiner will be going into detail on this side because foreign investors who are invested earlier will realize that they have lost the money. They have lost the money. The capital is lost, right? People who invest in companies, people who invest in uh, properties, people in the share market, all the people know that they are dollar recovery, dollar recovery, what we talked here, 2.9 million dollar recovery, that kind of recovery will be very much lower because of the exchange rate depreciation. So this is a disadvantage. But those today who are outside Sri Lanka, today outside Sri Lanka who are there, if they want to invest, I think this is the right time to invest, right? If the country, the dollar gets stabilized over the next few months, right, it, it's at already depreciated. It has got depreciated heavily. So further depreciation is doubtful because if the government try to manage exchange rate and bring in more funds, even though it's loans, if they bring funds to the country and if they manage the exchange rate and then the managed exchange rate, Sri Lanka rupees start appreciating on the other side, then you will see that for a foreign investor at that, at this today time, you invest, you are in a beneficial situation. Okay. So that's the Good news, you have any, any challenge, any problem, there is opportunity. At this point, there are opportunities for foreign investors. They can buy or even Sri Lankans, mainly the Sri Lankans who are outside Sri Lanka, should be looking at that opportunity of investing in Sri Lanka because you can buy assets at a lower price today. Same assets, lower price, not in rupee term, in foreign currency term. So you buy it at this today's price, assume today's exchange rate, is 365. Today exchange rate is 365. Today you buy it, right? You are going to say you are going to buy hundred thousand dollars. 
you buy or you invest in Sri Lanka under thousand dollars, rupee wise you will get how much? 36.5 million. 36.5 million you invest in Sri Lanka. Uh, 36.5 million you invest in Sri Lanka today and if the exchange rate, exchange rate becomes say 300 rupees, exchange rate becomes 300 rupees, you will see that the same 36.5 million you invested, you will have more dollars in terms of dollar form, more dollars, right, you will have more dollars from foreign company or foreign investor or Sri Lanka outside Sri Lanka. That is because you are buying today at 365, if it's Sri Lanka rupees start appreciating, you will be getting more dollars as an investor. So that's the advantage, that's the advantage you will have when the uh, situation like this start improving, start improving. So maybe there is a doubt people have that whether that Sri Lanka rupee will start appreciating. That is something needs to see over a period of time with the foreign funds coming the loans start coming, there will be a positive side where Sri Lanka rupee can appreciate. So when the Sri Lanka rupee start appreciating, those investors today, today, not one or two years back, will be able to benefit. So that is something I want to tell at this point because your paper, the examiner will get into that kind of area in detail. So better you get into the foreign currency management topic, theory topic very strongly and understand properly because at this moment, the country is faced with a bigger crisis and main concern is about the exchange rate risk. So exchange rate risk management is becoming a very important role, very important aspect for everybody and anybody in the business. So you are supposed to learn 100% on this topic, uh, get all the sides of it, how it works from Sri Lankan exporter, how it works for importer, how it works for foreign investor, foreign investor already invested, foreign investor going to invest, so you should know what are the areas question can be tested. So you calculate and understand whether he benefit or he loses, okay. So that is basically you should be aware of. So that is basically the second question response. So we, we will be moving into moving into the uh, case study question. Always remember your three questions in your paper, one and two is 25 marks each. Generally the examiner uh, gives you to score marks in question one and two because it has uh, certain areas and then those are not very complicated questions to be honest. If you look at the past papers, you will realize that question one and two, you can score more marks than the case study. With case study, you are given a pre-seen material before the exam, three weeks before exam. So you have enough time to read and analyze the case. And when you attempt in the exam all the 50 marks, there are a lot of things you need to grasp and you have to apply. So there are a lot of areas being tested in the question. So your scoring ability of the marks in the third question or the case study is little difficult than question one and two. So always my suggestion, my personal opinion, you try to get the marks from question 1 and 2 by a, starting with that. Some people start with question 3, it is up to you, your choice, but you will see more time consuming for the case study because there are a lot of things, a lot of reading. Pre-seen you have to look at it, unseen you have to look at it and you have to relate it, your case has to be understood properly, a lot of things to be done at the exam hall. So getting marks in the case study within the time is going to be difficult. But question 1 and 2, generally as the question 2, 1 and 2 we looked at today, these are, if you are thorough with your basic chapters, I don't think anyone will grumble to get marks in question 1 and 2. You should be able to get it. And you can manage your time also properly, question 1 and 2. So you can say out of 3 hour paper, 1 and a half hours time, you should finish your question 1, 2 and get at least 30, 35 marks. 30, 35 marks, try much as possible to get 30, 35 marks, minimum, minimum I am talking, then you are through because case study out of 50 marks, 20 marks is you can get, you can try much as possible to get 20 marks, but do not try to get 35 marks in the case study, it is going to be challenging, 
it's going to be challenging. If you are getting, it's good. But it's easy to get in question 1 and 2. So, but my always suggestion, try with question 1 and 2, because that gives you confidence, it boosts confidence at exam hall and you can get that mark.